Ed Newick, what's up, Ed? Yes, Ed. Ed going once. Yes. There we go. Ed, go ahead. Yes, Ed. All right, goodbye, Ed. Uh, Anthony in Staten Island, what's up, Anthony? Hey, Mike, a couple of things, if you'll let me. One on Eli and then one on the firings today. Uh, regardless of what happens to Eli after this year, obviously every Giant fan wants him back. But there's not a better leader, more humble, classy professional in the entire NFL. The way he handles himself, is just a, he's a role model player in the, in the league. And in a league where there's so many teams that have a quote-unquote uh, you know, quarterback controversy, it's been an absolute honor watching this guy play for 14 years, knowing he's going to be there for you every Sunday. And I don't know if you get the same impression, but listening to the interview you just had with him, he, 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 I know he's always monotone, Mike, but he sounds broken to me. Like, he, this really got to him. Like, he's really heartbroken over this. I think he and was I, heartbroken over this. I, I, think it, I think it bothered him. I think, you know what, I think he loved being the giant quarterback. I think people didn't understand how much he loved being the giant quarterback. And I, I, I think it did bother him. I, I really do. I think, it, as his father said, he's heartbroken, but he's not bitter. And he'll play again, and he'll be fine. But he is brokenhearted, and they said, we're not going to hide that. And Archie, you know, made all those statements. And he said, hey, he said he is heartbroken. He was absolutely heartbroken by, the, by this. He did not want this to happen. This is his team. He said he couldn't believe he was standing on the sideline for, you know, he wanted to play. I mean, that's his job as far as he's concerned. That's what it's been his job for a very long time. And he wasn't thrilled that it wasn't his job anymore. It really bothered him. John in Oxford, uh, Connecticut. What's up, John? Hey, Mike, thanks for taking the call. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I wanted to get with you last week on all of this. I, I, I'm going to bring up this. I'm, I'm, I'm at a point where I feel like, you know, obviously McAdoo, a PR guy, he is not. I don't think he's a good coach, but that guy can't stand in front of a mic. But I have to say, though, Mara comes across, from my point of view, and I'm not a Giants fan, he's spineless. That's how Mara comes across. But I will tell you this much. After listening to that Eli Manning interview, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I got different ears than everybody else. I'm not a giant fan. I heard, um, you're going to turn, I heard a spoil of breath. And I'll tell you oh why. Oh, God. So, you I'll heard a spoil of breath. Well, let's think back when the guy got drafted. Did he like being drafted by San Diego? And how did he react around the freaking state? Gary yeah, was a kid. But he was a spoiled brat then. Oh my God! And have you watched? Have I, you ever heard? Did you you ever heard anything about this guy for fourteen years? Have you ever I, seen? Did you hear him say one thing about his coach? Oh, I don't have. To did, did you hear that his, his old coach? coach did you, you ever hear that his? Ever hear that his? UK. Did you hear that his he, coach? Did you hear that his his coach Tom Coughlin said he was the the best teammate and the most humble court player I don't ever? Care he about ever coached. Well, you should because you're a fool with your comments. They're ridiculous. The, the, um, you go 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 call Mr. Boyle Brad somewhere else because I think your comments are ridiculous. I also think they're mindless. This guy has never showed you one iota that he's spoiled about anything. What they made a business decision that they didn't want to go to San Diego. Okay, that's his father that did that. That wasn't him. He was coming out of college at the time. He let his dad make his decisions for him. So be it. He wanted him with the Giants. How'd that work out? He was the quarterback of the team for 14 years and they won two Super Bowls. How'd that work out for both teams? Work out badly. John Elway did the same thing. So if you have leverage, you do that. That's business. That's not being a spoiled brat. That's business, okay? And that wasn't him. That was his father who did that. His father didn't want him with the charges. He had his reasons. His father was with a team that was terrible for years. It ruined his career. So he was very protective of where his players went, his, his sons went. He wanted him with the Giants. He, he had a thing for the Giants. He wanted him with the Giants. He only lasted 14 years every day as their quarterback and played 210 games in a row. So I think his father made a good decision. And the Giants, all they got out of it was two Super Bowls. So I, I think they made a good decision. And they got one quarterback for, uh, for 14 years who played every game for 14 years. Every other team in the league has started at least three quarterbacks in the time where they've had one quarterback play. So I think that's worked out for them too. As far as him being a spoiled brat, then I don't know what you're paying attention to. To say that from your living room is just utterly ridiculous. Either you don't like the Giants or don't like him for some reason, but boy, it's just like so, it's so far from the truth, it's just ludicrous. You know, you're allowed any opinion you want, but when they just don't make any sense, you know, they just, you know, where it comes from, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just not worth listening to. Ross 